Rome prepares to make its final stand. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to another Total War Rome 2 Divide et Impera battle taken from the head to head between me and Republic of Play. We go ahead and do these campaigns every single Wednesday at 3 p.m. GMT. So, if you want to see more battles like this, you want to see the campaign that leads up to battles like this, then go ahead and make sure to tune in every Wednesday, 3 p.m. GMT. And you can go ahead and find out more about these as well by hitting the bell notification and obviously subscribing that way you'll get notified when these streams do go live but yes welcome back guys today we have a very very exciting roman fort battle alongside a little sally out as well by the garrison that are rushing towards and quickly trying to reinforce the fort however darren is preventing me with his cavalry right here so as i said this is not not really a roman last stand i kind of over exaggerated that a little bit rome have a very stronghold in in Greece they have basically I think the whole of Greece and Illyria so they're definitely not out by any means and Rome is very unlikely to make peace with Carthage in the campaign itself so I don't really have to worry about Rome kind of rolling over I'm hoping they'll send more legions back and, and I'm sure they will this battle was kind of the last stand of uh, the province above Beneventium I think it's Arinium I'm not too sure Darren basically holds the three of the four cities in the Roman uh, Latium province so defending this one right here is actually really big because if I can hold him back at this city or just outside of this city it basically means that he can't start investing in making Latium the richest province in the game so it is very very important that I try and at least slow him up here um, because again as well, as well every single kind of battle that we fight against Darren in Rome is very very crucial because it basically you know every casualty we take every battle we slow him up on it gives Rome more time in Greece to, to win their wars and then send more men back to him uh, so yeah as I said it's, it's very very crucial that we do lots of damage to him and that we try and slow him up as much as possible so we're not always necessarily looking for a win in these head-to-head -head battles we're mainly just looking to do as many casualties as possible but I do have a very, very, very nice army. This is probably one of the better armies that we have been able to command for Rome. Because if you guys don't know, in Divide et Impera, or just in head-to-heads in general, if you go ahead and um, if you go ahead and play a head-to-head -head against someone, you take command of all of the AI armies. So for us, we are playing as the Seleucids and Darren as Carthage. But when Darren is fighting Rome, we jump in and we have to try and slow him up, which makes these head-to-heads really really interesting um so yeah anyway that was basically a, a bit of a long intro but just to kind of keep you guys up to date about what's going on in the head to heads and uh, all that glorious stuff so yeah as you can see darren has a pretty nice army um they are somewhat depleted i think a lot of these men aren't full strength you can see they're down to like you know they're losing a, about you know 20 to 30 percent of their strength on his second army and i think on this army it's a little bit more tanky yeah this one has a lot more sacred band in and you know a lot more heavier infantry but his armies are bleeding and that was you know heavily down to the previous battle that we fought if you guys saw the last Divided Impera head-to-head -head campaign, we held the city and we made Darren take, you know, 50% casualties. And it's very hard to replenish that with the population mechanic in Divided Impera in Italy. You know, Darren's not going to have an easy time of it. He kind of almost needs to ferry troops across as best as he can. Um, so again, you know, we're just slowly whittling him down and hopefully Rome can just outproduce him or, uh, you know, bring him back. Because again, we, we're not expecting to you know, win as Rome, but we just need to slow him down so that we as the Seleucids on our side of the campaign can really push forward. So in this battle, obviously, we have the town reinforcing as quickly as possible. However, Darren's on a very smart move, and he's basically trying to cut me in half and, and giving me an ultimatum. He's like, Jackie, you can either come out of the fort and give up your defensive position and try and save this garrison, or you can let it die, because there is very little things I can do to, to you know, basically make the most of this. Because, you know, this is a town garrison. It's got Italian swords. It's got Italian citizens, town guard. Nothing too great. The Italian swords aren't awful, but they're not, you know, anywhere near as good as anything Darren has to offer in this battle. Um, so he's basically kind of giving me the ultimatum. As well as that, Darren's army is very much a field army more than anything else. I think between the two armies, he has something like seven to eight to nine cavalry, uh, which means that he is very good on the open field. But again, that's going to come back to hurt him in the fort itself because he's not going to be able to utilize that cavalry, which means a quarter of his army 
can't help him out in this siege or in this uh, fort battle. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and basically sacrifice this brave town garrison um, as, you know, it, it would be nice to have this inside the fort, but it's not going to win me the battle um, and I'm not going to lose the battle by sallying out my army. So I'm basically just going to box up and let him envelop me. He's going to, yeah, punish me pretty heavily here, but there's nothing I can really do. It's kind of almost just like a, a a lost cause at this point. I kind of have to just give these guys up, which is a shame because this is like, you know, 2,000 on them, which could be really useful. But also, do keep in mind that we are playing... Um, oh, that's actually a really nice charge I managed to get on him here. Um, we have to kill a couple horses here. Um, yeah, do keep in mind that we do play with a 40-minute battle timer. I did play some other battle off camera, so you don't know exactly how long this battle does go for. And I've got a very, very defensive army. I've got a lot of Prince of Pays and I've got a lot of Triarii. Um, so I've got a very, very nice army, I think, for defending a fort like I have. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of happy with him wasting, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes outside the fort trying to kill this town guard. Because, again, it bides me time. And every turn we get for Rome surviving in Italy is amazing because it means they're more likely to finish their battles over in Greece. I think the score of DC, the faction they're fighting, only has Pella left. And once Pella is done, I'm assuming we're going to see a lot more legionaries shifted over to the uh, to the Italian mainland. And as long as they can hold the south of Italy, as long as they can hold Paris, I think they're going to constantly filter in armies. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if we can just hold this battle, you know, if we can win this battle, that's amazing because it means that the most southern Latian province or city you know, is still alive for a couple more turns. Darren is sent back and this army is still really healthy. Um, I'm able to get some really nice slinger shots off on these Balearic Slingers, which is actually pretty huge when I'm in a fort. Any missiles I can kill is huge. However, he is going to realize and pull these guys back. Um, now, as you can see, look at just the mess that is happening. It was just such a cool battle here. Uh, I definitely took some time just to, to zoom out and watch this unfold as he completely envelops me from every single side. My town garrison just trying to defend as best as it can. Uh, there's nothing I can do, though. You know, the fact that Darren has this much cavalry um, it's, it's almost, yeah, it's almost impossible for me to do anything because he's just hammering away at my formation, uh, not letting me move up. And he's, you know, he's utilizing this cavalry because it's not really going to be used for much else. So he can just use it to hammer an anvil into my front lines. Obviously against spears, it's not going to be amazing, but he's not going to be able to use it in the, in the city map, uh, in the fort much. However, there, there was definitely some stuff he could have done. I'll, I'll mention that later on when he comes to assaulting the fort. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely mention some of the stuff he could have done with his cavalry, which I think would have been very, very useful. Um, but in, in the like midst of battle, uh, you know, it's sometimes hard to really, you know, fully utilize everything. But I mean, oh my God, look at that. Oh, as brutal, right? It's quite hard to tell who's who in this mess because a lot of my shields aren't exactly very Roman, but... As you can see, his hot lights are moving around, enveloping. We've got my missiles hammering away, more cavalry coming in. Looking to punish my, my lines. And obviously, these aren't like Prince so they are just Town Watch. And I can't imagine the Town Watch really have great year. But yeah, four, four time round, actually not that bad. And decent melee attack. These guys aren't awful. It's just their armor that really lets them down. Um, but we do have some bonuses against cavalry. And Darren is going to be able to find a hole in my line. Pull through a little bit through these kind of, you know, weaker infantry and just come through. And I definitely noticed that. It was really funny. During the live stream and during the battle, I was like, oh, shit, there's a massive gap there. But I just have nothing to protect it. And then, like, two seconds later, Darren just came bull bulldozing through that gap. His hot lights are pushing forward and just completely, you know, annihilating my front line. My swords are trying their best, but... It's just not going to be enough, and the amount of pressure Darren put on this line is very, very dangerous. And there you go. The majority of this town guard and town watch are going to basically completely break. I managed, I think, to kill like a unit of horses. Uh, I did some decent damage to these guys. I definitely tired out a lot of this infantry as well, you know, so these are going to fight a lot less effective when they get to the battle. A lot of active infantry a lot of uh you know, you know tired as well i actually mainly just yeah there's a tired over here um and there's a few other kind of tired infantry um but after the long march back as well to form up here or to form up here his men aren't going to be the freshest in the world that does mean some stuff in divided pair as you can see you know when units are active they fight at 90 percent of their strength i think when they're tired they fight a lot worse as well i think it's like 70 percent so tiring out his hoplites is actually pretty important 
Um, but as you can see, Darren has managed to annihilate that town guard, killing about 2,000 of my men, which, you know, sucks, but as I said, not the end of the world. And then for my infantry, you know, I have a lot of these principes of the early period. So these guys, so Rome has hit their, um, their reforms, but they haven't upgraded their units. The AI just sometimes doesn't do it. However, these principes are pretty deadly. I mean, look at them stats. 24 melee defense, 9 melee attack, 70 morale, 50 armor. The, the most important thing there is probably the, uh, the, the base morale and also the armor. Then bonuses will just make these guys extremely deadly. Um, and it's kind of worked in my favor as well uh, that Rome hasn't really gone ahead and upgraded their units. Because even though the swords are very, very good, um, you know, they, they cut through a lot of units. Uh, we're fighting mainly a lot of defensive battles and generally... In these head-to-heads, Rome will always be on the defense. You know, Darren will always look to catch the AI off guard and always mainly be the attacking. Like 75% of the time, the player is generally always attacking. Which means having these defensive units is actually really, really good for uh, for these fort battles, for these city battles, because it just gives me that that you know survivability. Now, don't get me wrong, you know the sword principes and and stuff like that are, are amazing. Um, but I'm definitely not complaining having the ability to command you know these spear principes, especially in these defensive siege battles as well. You can also see as well if we go ahead and click back on play uh, quickly um, as Darren just continued to form up his units. And as you can see, you know, his men are still fr fresh, but that's going to be not like 100% fresh. We're going to get active pretty quickly. Um, and these guys are winded on this flank as well. So I'm pretty happy with that. But as you can see, I have set up some barricades. Barricades in Dividers and Pera are actually really, really tanky. They take a good, you know, five minutes to destroy. So that was, you know, it's really cool kind of the way they work. They kind of act more as an intended as a stopper. Um, I've also set up some spikes and stuff. Um, and just the other defenses. I think I've set up some, like, you know, for, uh, spike pits and other stuff like that. So I'm really looking, you know, not necessarily to win this battle, as Darren does have a lot of infantry. I'm also looking just to try and whittle him down as best as I can. You know, the timer is ticking. And again, I won't spoil whether or not this does hit 40 minutes. But, you know, it is very, very close either way. It either does or it gets very close to hitting that time limit. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, you can see some of the spike traps just killing one or two, three, you know, two or three men. Um, and Darren's going to immediately move up his formation, start burning down these towers. But again, the towers do take a long time to break down. Uh, he's also going to start burning down the entire wall. So any infantry unit can burn down these barricades, which is pretty nice. Um, he can't burn down this layer of wall, I don't think. Um, but everything else along here. So these three walls can all be burnt down. However, you have to kind of micro it pretty heavily. Um, as a fire doesn't tend to spread. So you actually have to manually click every single side. And right now, I'm getting a lot of missile fire coming in. And, I, and again, I'm just really trying to punish him as much as possible. I'm not looking to win this battle through killing his army. It's either I'm looking to win this battle through time. Or I'm looking just to wound his army as much as possible. And before he breaks in and, and you know, kills my army. Because... I have, I have a lot of reserve. This is a full Roman legion right here. I have some, you know, some pretty nice reserves. And if we can break Darren's army so that he, he doesn't come in from every single side, you know, that's pretty nice. Right now, he's really focusing down these sides, which completely makes sense, right? This army isn't, you know, fully, you know, stocked up. And this army is pretty tired. And he wants to obviously fill, fill to this entire line, you know. He doesn't necessarily have every single man. Um, and I'm just trying to utilize as many peeler as I can right now. I want to get this peeler off uh, before he comes flying in. Even if it's not necessarily on the most, you know, the most valuable units to be killing. I still just want as much missile fire and as much javelin fire coming in. And you can see there's a lot of missile fire coming out of that fort, which is nice. I'm going to quickly go ahead and form up my defensive formation, which is obviously going to be... I mean, there's so much missile fire coming back and forth from Darren's javelins and from my missiles. Uh, we're really just hammering away at one another. Uh, we really are, oh my god. So as you can see, he is coming in pretty brutally right now, looking to try and smash up the settlement. And here we go, the first assault kind of coming in and then falling back. Um, which again is, you know, probably just trying to utilize all his missiles first. Trying to whittle down this unit of Hastati, which he's doing a good job of. He's he's almost killed, uh, he's killed 31 of them so far. Um, which is pretty important as well, because he doesn't necessarily have to kill all of my infantry to break into the fort. He has to try his best just to whittle them down so the gaps appear, you know, as these units get more, because they're obviously in a shield wall, I think, right now, or whatever, there's some uh, disciplined formation. Um, you know, as that formation, it already kind of makes them extremely tight already. Um, so as he continues to 
throw missiles at a unit, that formation gets smaller and smaller. And as you can see, I'm having to quickly go ahead and reinforce. He's also doing a very, very good job of hammering these side units, which are kind of focusing down this side of the settlement. Um, so he's using his missiles to come in and hit these, this unit in the side. And here we go, the first assault on the forts moving in. This is going to be using some kind of weaker Libyan spears. These guys are more of a lighter infantry uh, meant for the flanks, which is pretty good for me because obviously, you know, I've got heavy Roman spears. They'll be able to repel these lighter infantry. Um, but yeah, it's kind of the other sides, you know. That's a kind of a problem I'm facing right now is, you know, he's coming in from multiple sides. His missiles are doing an amazing job of slaughtering this unit of Astartes, which is quite quickly absorbing my reserves. Yeah, I mean, they are dying very quickly. And you can see I, I kind of realize what's happening right now and I try and tilt my formation. But these missiles are very, very painful. You can see I am kind of focusing them down with my own missiles as best as I can. He's also set up a nice little firing arc here as well with his Balearic Slingers, uh, looking to hammer in these side units as well. But yeah, he's, he's definitely burning down a lot of this settlement. The timer is ticking. But already I'm having to commit a decent amount of my reserves to this battle line, you know. I don't really have that many left. I have kind of one unit here, which is going to filter in when I get the chance to, um, which is very nice. I was also very lucky for some reason. Darren, I, I guess, didn't burn down this part of the wall either. Uh, maybe he was a little bit worried about time and just wanted to get stuck in. But it's basically me meaning this one unit right now is really tanking the majority of this Carthaginian assault. And the missiles coming in are just brutal. Yeah, you can see it. And like, it's kind of good because of that because enemies, my slingers, can really do some damage. And they're doing pretty good on kills. 110 kills so far, 150 kills, 130 kills. Uh, these slingers are doing some serious, serious damage. Uh, Darren has now burnt down all the towers, though, which is going to be big for him. And once again, you know, it's kind of like he's throwing in a lot of his men to a very, like, a dense part of this settlement. So I definitely understand why he's kind of forced into attacking, but he definitely did kind of um, push in a lot, kind of, like, um, preemptively, you know. I think it would have been very, like, a lot nicer if he would have broken down all of these walls and just kind of had a united front. Because this way it means there's like one or two units are really tanking the majority of the enemy army, uh, which I definitely do benefit from. These are some Principes as well. These are the Samnite ones though, I believe. Uh, so they're not exactly the best ones in the world, but they're still pretty decent. I also tried to bring my Slingers over to this side, but his Balearia Slingers just completely outranged mine, so I couldn't even hit them. Um, and right now they're going to have a field day just hammering in along this unit. However, uh, this unit is actually pretty good not to be hit because uh, the armor is not actually that high on them. They only have 40 armor, uh, so the, ar the like superior armor piercing on the Valeria Slingers isn't going to be that great, um, especially in the early game. Valeria Slingers definitely shine towards the, the later game, and they definitely shine against Greek units where the Hoplites do do a lot more. So now Darren is finally destroying the rest of the wall, so it kind of took him a little bit of time. Um, and again, that's, you know, all of these things add up during these head-to-head -head battles. The reason why it took him so long to burn down this part of the wall and burn down this part of the wall is because he's in a rush. He spent like a good 20 minutes killing my town guard and my town garrison out of the field. So, you know, he's in a much more of a rush than say, I. oh, obviously I am. I, I'm more than happy for this battle just to continue on. Um, but yeah, you know, like Darren is in a very much a, a pretty large rush. So he is trying his best to... Uh, get stuck in. He's trying his best just to push in and I've got such a defensive army that it's uh, very hard to achieve that And you can see his hoplites really hammering against mine But these are defensive units, you know, they're meant to be held here I've got principes on my flank as well looking to repel his lighter infantry his light infantry I'm gonna break through my light infantry uh, You know, I really the main problem for me is gonna be these missiles and it's going to be his hoplites. You know, I'm not going to be able to do 1v1 sacred band. And even like his mid-tier uh, hoplites are really good. But also, look at this. You know, he's got five units of cavalry just sticking out. Six, seven. Is this cavalry as well? Yeah, he's got like seven units of cavalry. That's seven units that could have been infantry stuck out of the field and basically are useless right now. You know, if he would have had just five more units of infantry, he could have been assaulting this side right now and really stretching my formation. Because as you can see, my last unit of reserves or one of my last units of reserves is having to go in to basically go ahead and reinforce this section because his Balearia Slingers are doing a lot of damage to this guy, this unit from the side. So, you know, I've only really got two units left back here and I have to keep this unit of Astartes because if they go, then his cavalry come flying into the settlement. 
Um, but right now, my defenses are holding. I'm racking up a lot of missiles and his lighter Libyan infantry. That again, are meant for more outflanking, fast moving, you know, kind of ambushes. They're kind of being beaten back pretty heavily. You know, these guys aren't meant for a, a slog like the Romans are or the Hoplites are. They're meant for kind of, you know, ambushing. They're meant for you know, quickly reinforcing gaps in formations. And I'm simply just going to move in. I mean, you know, my defensive shield wall is just proving you know, really, really nice. And this is one of the things I think Darren could have done to win this battle uh, a lot sooner or, you know, winning it at all, depending on what happens in it. Again, I don't want to spoil it. Um, I think one of the things he definitely, or, or I guess I could say, uh, could have done to mitigate casualties um, is use his cavalry. And at this point, I thought he was going to do exactly that is use all of his cavalry to burn down this entire wall right here. If he would have burned down this entire wall with his cavalry, there's literally nothing I could have done. Um, and then he could have quite easily, I think, have got his cavalry in. You know, he's seven units of cavalry. All my reserves besides two units are, are you know, stuck into this battle. I'm probably going to have to deploy one more unit of my Prince Pays pretty quickly, as he's doing a very good job of breaking through with his infantry here. You know, these sacred bands are breaking in pretty heavily. So, like, I think if he would have assaulted that wall, I would have been in a very, very, very bad situation. And there's not too much I would have been able to do about it because I just wouldn't have had the men. I would have been able to cover, I think, the majority of the wall. But he could have easily have just, you know, like, brought through his infantry, uh, you know, utilized that ability to keep on pushing in. So, yeah, I think that was probably the, the, the blunder of this battle. And at this point, I was like, crap, that's exactly what he's going to do. Because burning down this wall, you know, as you can see, like, I've spread out my men as best as I can. I've got some, you know, reserves here, but he could have easily have burnt down these walls, come into the side, and that would have been a huge morale shock, a really, really big morale shock, because right now, you know, you can see his sacred band are already breaking through, so supporting that um, in this battle would have been huge, and this would have, you know, caused a bigger break in my front line as more and more hoplites do come through, but... I'm definitely still just holding. The timer is ticking down. And as you can see, I'm, I'm starting to rout a lot of his men. As they get tired, you can see their morale is dropping heavily as they take more casualties. He's just having to pull back bit after bit. And things are looking pretty good for me. Maybe again like that, maybe he decided not to burn down this wall. Maybe that's why the cavalry were moving over. And then he decided not to burn down this wall because uh, he, he needed reinforcements over on this side. I mean, I definitely think about advancing out and pushing down, punishing him on this side and like trying to continue to commit out. But I realize that that's probably just way too risky. We could try and kill more of his men, but at this point, I just don't really need to. You know, this is not about winning. This is not about killing his army. It's all about just, you know, slowing him up and doing as many casualties as I can. Making him waste more and more turns as best as I can. So, as I said, like, I've definitely thought about advancing out of the settlement, but with the amount of cavalry he has, there's just nothing I can really do about it. Um, and his biggest push right here is starting to dwindle in his uh, capability of pushing through. And things are looking very good for me at this point. I've managed to basically repel his lighter infantry on the left-hand side. In the center here, his hoplites are making amazing progress. But I'm still doing damage to them, um, and they're not really making that much ground. And he's he really started to fall back. As well as that, he actually burnt down these barricades. And as you can see, a lot of these barricades aren't fully burnt yet. What you need to do with these is actually just attack them and not burn them. Attacking them makes it a lot quicker. But because he burnt them by mistake, I think I think we agreed like we spoke about this afterwards. He did it by mistake. I think they caught fire um, instead of the uh, back building right here. Um, so again, you know, small stuff like that really came into play. And Darren is just going to pull back right now. He's going to realize that he's not going to make much progress from here. So maybe he can reinforce, come around and try and assault from this side. But I've repelled his forces very nice in this battle. And you know, the defensive walls of the Principes with their high morale, their super high melee defense. The melee defense is mainly just high because of that, uh, that um, formation that we put them in, the discipline formation. Darren is going to pull back and he, he doesn't really know what to do at this point. There is only a very set amount of time left in this battle and he's going to just pull back and that's going to be basically the battle right there. Darren is going to retreat his army off the field and we are going to claim a victory for Rome, which is absolutely amazing. Um, the main thing why it is so amazing is because uh, we didn't lose that many men in this army. If we take a look at the casualties, like 
Uh, we go back to this. These Roman units are 140, 170, 113. Oh, this one's basically full HP. You know, uh, this one's full HP. This one's basically lost 20 men. This one's lost 30. Uh, this one's you know, lost none. These two are completely healthy, which is absolutely huge because it means that these Roman units, uh, one, will replenish in friendly land. Obviously, they have lots of population in Italy for their classes. Um, so these guys will all replenish, and obviously Darren's won't. Right now, Darren's armies are stuck in enemy territory. So these armies that, that are, you can see are pretty beaten up. You know, a lot of these men are very depleted. You know, they're going to have to go back to, to Italy or anywhere. They have to scrape their replenishment wherever they can, and uh, they're going to really, really struggle. And this was definitely a hard battle. I think neither me or Darren really expected the, uh, the Roman forces to do as well as they were, but they were just like a solid wall. Um, and when Darren has brought like more of a cavalry focused uh, land army uh, to the fight, it means that you know these forts are brutal. The Roman AI is doing amazing by fortifying. They're playing completely to their strength. Whereas uh, in the open field, Darren takes these battles every single time because he's got light infantry that can outflank my slower moving spear units. He's got a lot of cavalry that can definitely dominate the mobil mobility game. Um, but that gets completely taken away in a fort and the Roman AI is doing an amazing job of utilizing that, fortifying up where it needs to. Um, and Darren is kind of on the clock because there's always that, I need to take Italy quickly before Rome comes across. Because Rome will have like six armies, uh, maybe, maybe five armies in Greece conquering it right now. And then as soon as the AI kind of deals with their prioritization of the Scurridisi, they're going to turn their focus over to Italy. And they'll be sending armies back to try and reclaim Rome, to try and reclaim the Latian province. Um, I, I definitely think Darren is going to you know, slowly grind away at, at Rome. Um, but the longer he takes her, the better it is for us. Because we kind of have a lot of opportunities in, in the Seleucid sphere of influence to do some amazing stuff. Because... Uh, we can now focus on going to Armenia. We can focus on Asia Minor. We can focus on finishing uh, the uh, the Saudian uh, territory to the south that we're slowly conquering. Uh, we can focus going south of the Nile. There's a lot of stuff we can definitely do now. Um, and we definitely just took Crete last episode as well, which is a great naval base. Uh, I think my plans are for the future. And if Darren, if you're watching this, turn this off right now. Because sometimes we like to watch each other's uh, battles and stuff. Because it's always interesting to see what the other person has uh, thought. So if Darren, if you are watching this, you know, just... Just turn it off right now. Um, but my plans for the future are definitely going to go into Asia Minor and probably Armenia. I want to kill Rhodes next after taking out... Um after taking out Crete, because uh, by killing Rhodes, we'll get a really nice wonder building that will give us loads of money. It gives like 10% tax across your entire empire, which is insane. And Rhodes as well, I think will be a very important settlement as it will provide us with a, uh, you know, some more naval bases. Because uh, that's what it's going to come down to. When me and Darren start fighting, it's going to be huge conquests in Greece, I think. It's going to be huge conflict in uh, in southern Africa, like northern Africa, but southern Africa from where the map is along Libya. And it's going to be a lot of conflict in the Mediterranean and the, the islands of Sicily and the islands of Crete, Rhodes and Cyprus are going to be so crucial because that's going to be where we're restocking our navy. That's going to be where we're, you know, mainly fighting. This is going to be so much fun um, when we do come to blows. It really, really is. So I can't wait to uh, see... Uh, when that happens and you know it's not that many streams away as soon as Darren I think what will happen honestly is when Darren starts to win the war against Rome I will declare war on them to take land in Greece um, and try and beat them back um, and that will be when kind of when the powder keg does erupt so yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, make sure you tune into these streams. If you enjoyed this battle, drop a like and a comment down below. If you just enjoy watching these battles, make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell notification. Consider supporting me on Patreon. Link is in the description. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys in the next one.